just do a quick overview of law of sines and law of cosines. Whenever you have a right triangle, you're going to want to use um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and so on. So Katoa. But if you have a non-right triangle, you don't want to use so Katoa. We have angles A, B, C, and sides opposite. A, B, C, what you're going to want to do is use the relationship of proportions, which says that if you took side A over the sine of angle A, these are across from each other, that'll be equal to B over the sine of B, which is across, equal to C over the sine of C, which is across. That's a great relationship. You'll use that a lot for a non-right triangle. Notice that you need side angle pairs. Okay? The other one that we had was a lot of cosines. And we use that one when we have things like C, B, and an angle A. And notice that we don't know any side angle pairs. So what you do with that is, is that, let's say you're looking for this side A here. You go A squared is equal to uh, B squared plus C squared minus 2BC sine of A. And that A, notice, side A is across. This is a pair. But it's an unknown pair. Okay? And uh, so notice that this is called the law of cosine. So I'm going to write this one. This is law of sines. Did I miss a two? Cosine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scary. Therefore, it's called the law of cosine. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Making up math here. Okay, so uh, those are really handy for non-right triangles. The, <laughs> yep, the other condition there is if you knew uh, A, B, and C and no angles. And the way I like to look at it is do it, decide what you want to use by use, looking at the formula. If this formula here says... A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C. You see how that you have, you know, you have these side angle pairs and you know one other one and you're good to go. Which combos won't work? Well, this one won't work very nicely. You could do three equations and three unknowns, by the way. No, thank you is the correct response. You don't want to do that. The other one is this one. That's not going to work either for law of sines. So those are the ones you use law of cosines for. Isn't that great? Two triangle formulas you need to know. You need to know for non-right triangles. Okay? For non-right triangles, uh, if you, uh, the area of a triangle is just one half the base times the height. Always has been, always will be. Uh, you can find the area another way if you don't know the height. Maybe you know two adjacent sides. I call it the side angle sandwich. You could go one half the base, cut this into an H. The sine of A is H over A. So you could replace that with um, A times the sine of angle a. Actually, this would be C. That would be C. A, B, the top point, C. Because the base is this whole length B. Mm -hmm. But it's still one half the base times height. This guy, I can guarantee you're going to see it sometime, somewhere in the BC test. They love this. They love that formula. The other one that they love, that you don't see very often, is the, have you ever seen the hero's formula? That one's pretty rare. 
Whoops, this is S. They use a partial sum. Quiet, please. So the area of the triangle is the square root of S times S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. And that's if you just plain know sides. You can find the area of a triangle. Well, that's pretty slick. I don't know. Okay. Just want you to know it's there. Uh, let's do real quick area of a sector. Okay, that is something like one half r squared theta. And the reason it's that is because it's it's a proportion for a, a full circle. Know the arc length too, which is uh, arc length usually referred to as s is r times theta. These two have got to be in, these have to be in radians, please. Or just, it's arbitrary and it won't work. So those are some formulas with non-right triangles that you'll run into. All right.